Let's make sure. Christy, can you double check for me that we are live in both groups? I think we are. I think we are. <laughs> Okay, I'll, let, I'll let you uh i'll let you intro uh team team go go group and i'll introduce the honey badger group and then we'll roll awesome well welcome everyone this is the first this uh, team go go meetings are every wednesday at one o'clock and so is the expert mentor live every wednesday at one o'clock so the only way we could make this happen is to kill what two birds with one stone so it's my no absolute problem. honor not <laughs> to have you in team go go and this is also feeding over to honey badgers at the same time yeah, and um, what what are what are we at? Episode one ten, something like that. That's uh, amazing. You've been a guest several times. I've been uh, tugging to get you back on, and uh, you actually uh, kicked us off this year, right? State of the state of the uh, social media union, if you will. Um, just kind of what's going on. What's new in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. I mean, like you know, let's go back. Let's go back to that conversation. How much things have changed well, since then. Uh, prior to COVID. So we were not prepared to that little curveball that 2020 threw at us. So we might have to do a new one, huh? Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. So, so cool. Um, you want to kind of just share just kind of, you know, our, our, our objective, our goal for um, our time together with, with um, your awesome team GoGo group and the Honey Badger Nation? Absolutely. So I wanted to have you on here because I think it's so, so, so important to have a real estate coach and so many agents don't. And maybe they don't even know they should have one or what to look for, how to interview one, how much do they cost? What can a real estate coach do for you? Where they can take your career from where you are to where you want to go? Does that real estate coach actually have to, have to sell real estate or just know the ins and outs of real estate? So the goal today is why chapter roosters hire real estate coaches. Why should every realtor have a coach or should they have a coach and what does it cost and all that? So I'm honored to have you here today to answer a lot of the questions. I know you have a presentation that kind of takes us through of why top producers hire real estate coaches. And then at the end, you'll open it up for questions for everybody. Um, we okay. have some questions that we got prior and we can also have some questions here live that we are going to hopefully be able to answer all of them. I love it. I love it. You ready to dive in? I am ready. Uh, may I tell the world uh, of who you are? Sure. <laughs> awesome. So now <laughs> John here has conducted over 11,000 personal coaching sessions. That's 11,000 hours with over 500 different real estate clients. And he has been doing this and training the top 1% of the realtors in the nation since February of 2012. So John is, he didn't start today. And I'm sure you have, you could write a book about the stories and your achievements um, that you have been able to help agents to take their businesses to the next level. So it's it's truly our honor to have you on here today. So thank you so much for an hour of your life because I know it's very, very important and you could have spent it in many other ways. So I want to go straight to the point. I love it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for making this happen. And uh, let's, uh, let's get after it. Let's dive in here. Awesome. So we've already kind of talked about the goal, uh, what it is that we're looking to accomplish, um, out of the session. Um, if, if nothing else fails, you know, you guys, you know, hopefully we'll have some confidence to be, you know, to get your shit on like, like Connor, you know, get your little billionaire strut going. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to take and get a little confidence coming out of here or, uh, you can, uh, have the confidence uh, of this guy after he just finished, uh, second, second Ironman. Um, so two time Ironman training for third, COVID threw, threw us for a little curveball. We would have had two more. Um, we had two more scheduled for earlier this year. So those got postponed, but uh, we got one. Hopefully that will go go down later later this year. So that'll be uh, that'll be number three, and then we'll get number four um, next year. So congratulations. Um, <laughs> so Gogo gave a little a little heads up, um, just kind of on the coaching side of things. But uh, really, to sum up a lot, this uh, this picture does it. Um, those of you guys know the the, uh, the much better half, uh, Miss Holly. Um, I call her Holly MF kitchens because she is, she is just that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, life on the beach. I mean, that's, uh, that's the pursuit of the, of the perfect day and being able to have those waters, that beach and hop on the boat and cruise the islands and cruise the Virgin islands. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's definitely, um, the inspiration, um, a little, a little more background, man, college dropout. Actually, Michael Reese and I were uh, roommates coming out of high school. We went to junior high and high school together. We we're roommates at Cameron. Uh, uh, at Cameron. Uh, we both, both, both college dropouts. And uh, way I, back. Yeah. Uh, 
I love Mike, Mike left. We were in Oklahoma. Mike went to Texas. Um, I went out to California and that was really my schooling. You know, if, if you've ever had, um, I have been really, really fortunate to, you know, my first two bosses were amazing human beings and, and really poured um, a lot into me. And, uh, my boss out in California, she taught me everything business. She taught me, you know, um, not just how to give a golf lesson or play better golf, but also how, you know, marketing and purchasing and, and retail and, and run a profitable shop, understand food and beverage, right? Just the whole thing. Um, when it comes to a semi-private resort, uh, golf, you know, uh, business. And she just taught me a lot of principles and was able to take that with um, a couple buddies and, um, ride with them through four ideas, execution to business, to profitability, to sold. And then, um, we sold the last business and we thought it would be a, a good idea to buy a bar. And, uh, it was probably one of the worst decisions that, uh, we've ever made. And just because you like to drink beer in a bar doesn't mean you need to own a bar. So, um, lesson learned, but that opportunity opened the door to me here. Um, and at the time, Michael, um, was spending a lot of time with Jay and he was the connector and, uh, Michael connected Jay and I in October of Oh four. And, uh, the rest, uh, I guess you can say, is history. So over the last 15 years, started, grown, scaled two separate seven-figure real estate businesses. So not just coaching, but also operating at a super high level. Um, it's like GoGo Share, personally coached over 500 real estate agents. I updated that number, GoGo, uh, last night when I was uh, putting this this slide deck together. 11,176 one-on-one sessions uh, wow. since 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 2012. 5,000 professionals, you know, um, total capacity. Some names on there you guys might recognize, um, you know, Gaydosh, Mr. Albie Stasek, Shoemaker, uh, Tracy and Jason in Atlanta. They'll probably do 800 transactions this year on their way to 1,000. And, um, of course, the man, Mr. Brett Jennings, Dino Dell, just some great human beings that I've had the opportunity to, to work with. So, go, go. This is kind of kind of the agenda. Um, and then we'll, you know, really get into some questions. But, um, you know, why everyone needs a coach, how to pick a coach. And really, what will the coach deliver? So after this presentation, man, we'll dive into any and all questions. Uh, We'll keep going until everything's answered. And, um, you know, if something pops up after the fact, you guys will be able to reach out and we'll get uh, get anything answered for you all. So why we all need a coach. Um, Selecting the right person for the right job is the largest part of coaching. Yeah. Um, there was a great podcast episode with uh, Shane Parrish. He has um, a podcast called The Knowledge Project. So if you're really into thinking, if you're into mental models, um, how to make better decisions, Shane's your guy. Um, he has a weekly uh, newsletter that you can subscribe to called the Farnham Street blog. Farnham Street, that's where um, Warren Buffett's uh, you know office is on is on uh, Farnham street. And so he, he named it after that. And, um, Shane is a uh, former, uh, he, um, he was a spy <laughs> is what he was. No. And, uh, and so he, he's very, very analytical. And so he had Ed Lattimore, who was a, a former boxer, one of the best, just like simple, like straight to the point, factual, like, Holy shit, I got it, right? Podcasts on 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 making decisions in life with Ed Lattimore. Just just a, just an incredible incredible podcast. Even if you don't want to subscribe and listen, just search um knowledge knowledge project Shane Parrish Ed Lattimore. Any of that search, it'll come up. It's worth the listen. It's probably an hour long. But um it goes off on a tangent in there and talking about, you know, why everybody needs a coach. And he went on to say is that it's, it's human nature for our bodies to go into entropy. And he's like, we need a coach to give us the feedback loops to push us through the hard things and give us a balance to keep it between the rails. And, you know, really what, what, what our coaches do for us is that they help us uh, reveal our blind spots. We yeah. all have blind spots, every single one of us. And the thing is, is that for us to grow, we, we, have, to, we have to create um, communication and feedback loops to reveal what we don't see. 
because what we reveal is what we heal, right? That's always what we're looking for as we grow. We're looking for the constraints. We're looking for the bottlenecks. We're looking for the things that are slowing us down and we want to shine a light on it. And then we want to fix it. What we reveal, we can heal. I never realized that I, I know about the blind spots and I, but the way you put it just now, it makes me realize and the blind spot doesn't even allow you to see the problem. So you can't fix it if you don't know it exists. A hundred percent, 100 percent. Right. And so, so the coach will allow you to see things that you don't have naturally the eyes to realize that there is a problem. That's right. That is so true. And, you know, the, the, the thing that we look at, right, is, you know, we ultimately want to look at the results. And if we're not getting the results that we want, it's because we're behaving in a certain way, right? We're in, in our behavior is our habits, right? So we're doing something a certain way. And, and the reason we're behaving or doing a something a certain way is because we have a belief about that. And just because we believe something to be true doesn't mean it's true. And so when, when, you know, you have a coach that can challenge those beliefs and, and, you know, to be like, Oh, I can't believe I, I thought that was, was true. Right. It's like, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Now you can change it and you can change the behavior. You can change how you act. You can change your habits, which will then change your, your, your results. And this is what a coach really, really helps us do at the highest of levels. So, so go, go, how do we pick a coach, right? Mm -hmm. We got to spend, we've had the opportunity to spend some time with, with Tony Jerry. He's arguably one of the greatest executive coaches ever. And he's worked with the tops of the tops of the tops. And Tony lives here in Dallas. We've had the opportunity to spend time at his, at his compound. Um, he just recently opened up a, a, a new center, he, moving out of his house where, where he had his, everything set up before. But there was a session one day we got to spend with him and he, he broke, he, he really shared this and this really helped me put it all together. And, you know, he was like, <clears throat> You've got to make sure everything revolves around values, who you are at your core. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about vision, we, we, and, and when we work with clients, the first thing that we do is that we get clear on the vision, right? What is the goal? What is the overlying vision that you have for your business? But all, more importantly, does that align with your life? And because once you have the, once you have that, that vision, then we can nail the right model and then we can put the right strategy in place to go accomplish it. Absolutely. But before we do anything, everything starts with values. So one of the things that we have our clients read right from the jump is chapter two from Beyond Entrepreneurship by Jim Collins. If you guys are, are familiar, Good to Great, How the Mighty Fall, uh, Great by Choice, Jim Collins. But he wrote this book before all of that work, and it was called Beyond, Entrep uh, uh, Beyond Entrepreneurship. It's a blue book. And chapter two is about vision. And there's three things that, that make up your vision. It is your purpose. <clears throat> it is your mission, not mission statement, right? Mission. I, I, I'm not a mission statement guy. I'm a mission guy. Meaning what is, what is the, what is the battle that we have to win? That's going to help us win the war, right? So for example, if you're trying to scale Mount Everest, what is the first milestone that we have to get to? What's the first mission we're on, right? Well, it may be understanding all the stuff you need to even get over there, but let's say you're there. Well, the first milestone is to get to base camp one. So that's yeah. the first mission and we're going to do it by a certain time. And this is how we know we got there. That's mission. And then the third component of vision is values. And what Collins talks about is that everything starts with your values, and see, Gogo, when we even get into the hiring process and we're hiring people, we always start with core values. Are, is there a core value alignment? So, you know, this quote here from Tony is like, before you set your goals, you must set your values. What are your values? There's a great exercise from um, The Compound Effect. Um, if you guys haven't read it, it's, it's one of the best books that you can ever read. It's a book that you should gift more than any other book. 
You should make your kids read it. Um, it will change their lives. And um, there is a, an assessment on um, the comp the compound effect.com Darren Hardy site. There are seven free assessments. One of them is the core value assessment. It's one of the most powerful assessments that you could ever do. In fact, go, go. When Holly and I set our values for our family, we went through and we each did that. She had, and, and, and it distills it down to three. So she brought her three values to, to, to our family. I did it. I brought three values and then we adopted one more, which is gratitude. So we have seven values for our family and we, we did it through that exercise. So I can't, how cool. I can't wait to do it. Go do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to do it right after this. <laughs> so, so how to pick a coach. So I went on that tangent talking about values because you have to find a coach that has values that align with yours. Right. And even when we hire people, they've got to have values. When we strategically align with vendors, they have to have values that align. If not, you know, we always think, well, we're going to be frustrated with that person, but let's, let's have a little empathy. Let's put ourselves in their shoes. They're going to be miserable too. So we want to make sure that we're in a value core value alignment Yeah. with your coach. And that happened to me. The very first coach I, I had, um, he saw zero value in social media. And this was early on in my career. It was probably my year four. Um, so six years ago. And uh, even though I was adamant, social media back then wasn't a thing yet. So he didn't even understand it, but I was adamant about it. But we were so different of how he was coaching and where I was heading with my business that to me, it, was a, it, was, it became a very expensive phone call to ask me how I'm doing. Yep. And um, I let him go and I called the company and I said, hey, I need somebody who's, uh, if I may say this on this call and beep it if I can't, I need a <laughs> I need a bigger asshole than I am. I need because I need a coach for two reasons. A, I need them to force me to do things that I don't feel like doing but need to get done. And I also need them to hold me accountable and kill all my squirrels because I have the tendency of yeah. come up with a million great ideas and then you're bouncing like a ping pong ball and getting nothing done. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, Absolutely. I had to let that go because we didn't have the same values. He could not see the value in social media. And I knew that is my path and I had to follow that. And then my second coach and I got, she was just a godsend ball buster. And I, it turned my business around like in six months. Kudos to you for not giving up on it. Right. Not being one of those people that say, well, that shit didn't work. Right. No. Just wasn't the right part. We didn't have the same value. Just because he didn't see this in social media, that doesn't mean social media doesn't have a value. It just doesn't have a value in his eyes. So mm -hmm. I had to find somebody who can see the value in how I want to run business. I didn't want to go away from social media, but I still needed someone who can help me on the blind spots and the organizational and the systems department that I wasn't good at and kill all my squirrels. And, 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 you know, the other thing, you know, what we're looking for in a coach, and, and I think a little bit of this right here is just what you just, just shared, you know, do they have the contacts or the relationships or the connections? And, and it doesn't necessarily mean the immediate connection, but they can get you to who you need to get to, to help you accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish. You know, the thing too is, is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all about you and the coach is just there to, you know, provide the, the framework, the structure to help you accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish, you know, like, and, and, and there's different styles, right? Just like there's different leadership styles, but I can give you the framework and the principles, but I can't, I can't want it more than you. Right. And I can't, and it can't be my agenda. It can't be about me. It's all about you and you got to be careful, right? Because there are a lot of coaches out there that they make it about them and it's not, it is about you and what it is that you want to accomplish, right? Not everybody wants to grow a team, right? Yeah. What is it that you want to accomplish? What is your ideal day? What is your freedom? And that's what we're building and working towards, right? What's the goal? Let's establish the model to help you hit the goal and then let's get the right strategy to make you accomplish it. And so the toolbox, Right. And so I think that's what you were you were referencing is like, hey, I need somebody that under, that, that believes in social media, has some understanding about it that can help. And that's going to grow with me and push me to, to be better. Right. What are all the tools in their tool that they're able to bring to the table? 
And that's really what are, you know, what you're wanting to look for in picking a coach. So to the third part, uh, go, go, what will the coach deliver? Um, I say one of my favorite, he, he has to be my favorite author, um, Ryan holiday. And, um, you know, if you haven't read any of his books, um, add them to your reading list. They are, they are game changers. In fact, when we do mastermind, we usually give books out, right? I think go, go the, what, what in Cincinnati, did we give a, a digital president or something? We yes. always try yep. to give something. Yes. Yep. That was the one. So president. when, um, when Ryan dropped, um, he was the enemy. We gave everybody the, his, his two books. Um, he's got like six or seven, but we gave the obstacle is the way and ego is the enemy. And, you know, the obstacle is the way is, is really about stoicism. He has a, um, a book called the daily stoic, which I've read ever since it came out. So I think I'm on my third year, right? It's, it's a little passage every day on stoicism, Marcus Aurelius. So for um, the people that English is not their first language, what does stoicism mean? You know, um, it's a great question. You know, stoicism is is really um, not getting too high, not getting too low. Um, it, it's it's really about um, you know, like like Marcus Aurelius. You know, is one of the greatest stoics, if you will, that you could say, you know, the emperor of Rome, um, he didn't grow up in royalty. He was adopted <clears throat> and he, he always, um, he, he always, he, he never, he, he never took anything for granted and he didn't, um, um, abuse his power. Like, oh, awesome. he, okay. yeah, he lived, he, he lived with the mindset as if he had nothing and he was worth nothing. And it, it just, just very grounded. Right. Not you know, um, you know how Gary, Gary V talks a lot about, you know, there's only, there's only nine, 10, 11 people that are important in this world. And, you know, he, you know how he, he, he thinks about, um, he imagines his mom dying. Right. So he runs that scenario of, you know, he just, he just, you know, he looks at all the money in his, in his account and then he, you know, he gets some claim and then he's like, I get a phone call. And my mom died. Right. That's grounding him to where that shit don't matter. Right. Yeah. It just, at the end of the day, what really matters. And so uh, the point of the obstacle is the way is that the only way through, the only way to, 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 is through it, right? Whatever the challenge is, that's the only way to go. You can't go around it. You can't retreat. You have to go through it. You have to work through it. And um, it's a really powerful book. It made it through all of the uh, sports, the major sports um, locker rooms, a lot of the coaches. Um, and I tell you, who's really embraced it is the coach at Alabama, uh, Nick Saban. He 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 lives <laughs> he lives um, through that as as well. So it's just great. Anyways, going off on a tangent. All of you dads out there, Ryan has a daily email called the Daily Dad, um, and it is incredible. It's a quick one to two minute read every day. And it's little nuggets for us dads that that just little reminders of how we can be a better role model for our kiddos. And um, if you do anything from from this, I don't care if you hire a coach or whatever. Subscribe if you're a dad. If you know you ladies listening in, you know get your get get your husbands whatever get get them if you guys so have an email that they receive or how do you get yep, it's a it's a daily email email okay. it's an email so you got to subscribe to it so you can just uh just google ryan holiday daily dad subscribe to that newsletter it's a game changer for for all of you dads out there but um one of the things that jumped out um a while back that he sent over was talking about coaching and it was really referencing coaching their kids right and so you know, he said, you know, the role of the coach, as essential as it is, is difficult because of all the stereotypes we have as coaches, right? So there's Mike Ditka, there's Phil Jackson, there's Vince Lombardi, there's Tom Izzo, who you see screaming in kids' faces, right? Now, are these guys, um, have they won championships? Have they been at the top of their game? Hell yeah, they have, right? Phil Jackson, arguably one of the greatest coaches ever. Vince Lombardi, greatest, one of the greatest football coaches ever. They did, they did it that way, right? So you ask, what, which way is best, right? What, what kind of coach should I be, 
right? Well, oh, those guys, they're winning championships. I must, I must have to yell at people, right? And so when you look at that, there are too many coaches that just have that one note, right? They're the screaming coach or they're preoccupied with important things or they're, you know, I'm going to discipline you type of a coach or they're the cheerleader, right? The endlessly encouraging coach or, you know, permissive players coach, players, you know, call the shots. And, you, you know, you step back and you're like, man, we are way more complicated <laughs> than just being approached one way, right? We, we all have our, our different little um, uh, quirks and personalities and, and uh, you know, sometimes one way works, sometimes it doesn't. So different scenarios require different energy. Different teams require different coaches. And yeah. sometimes a different team member on the same team requires a different coach. So James Frey put this, you have to figure out how to be flexible. Okay. As a coach, you have to know how to be flexible, how to adjust, how to be what this, uh, the scenario in that moment requires. Yeah. That's what makes a great coach. And, you know, all of you listening in, if you have team members, you are a coach. You're coaching them. You can, you can say coaching leadership. It's, you can interject it, right? And, and the way to really grow your people is leadership, but it is coaching. Yeah. How are you coaching and leading your people? And, and, and so you can't coach everybody on your team the same way. You just can't, right? Like I can't, I, there's no way, like in, in our Lawton office, there's no way I can coach Stace the same I can coach Reedy or their other top producer, Adrienne. They're all three different personalities, all three different human beings. So do you make them take some sort of a test when they start working with you, like a disc assessment or anything like that? Or who, how do you come to conclusion of what is their personality style? You know, that is that is a fantastic question. And yes, yes, there are, um, there's some great, there's some great little personality tests out there. Um, we've always used the disc. I, I would, I would say we've gone through, we've done colors, we've done, um, uh, the Briggs, uh, we've done, I don't know, there's four or five that we've done from what I, I haven't gone through it. The, supposedly the Colby test is probably one of the better ones. We've just I the disc. I've heard of that. You've heard of Colby? Mm -mm. K O L B E dot com. I think it's like fifty bucks per test. I mean, you could get a you can get an enterprise one where you know you're probably on a subscription. I think it I think it dives in a lot a lot more. But I mean, I understand the disc, right? Yeah. And um, you know, we've spent a lot of time working with that. We worked with um, Gary Day Rodriguez, um, who went like on a like super deep level. Right. And, and, you know, taught us everything, what it meant. And so you learn that the other thing too, I, I would say, um, you know, go, go would be just, just really understanding strengths and weaknesses um, and, and being, being open to do you, that. Do you feel like when the agents come to you that they even understand their own weaknesses or is that something that you have to find? Yeah, I think you have to find it. Um, I think, I think, I think you have to help them find that, you know, what are they really good at and, and what do they suck at? And yeah. one thing that you can do, um, is just ask the people close to you that are, you know, not afraid to tell you what you need to hear. Yeah. absolutely. Right? So like, I mean, ask Holly. I mean, she's, she's like the most forward person, you oh, know, Chris reminds me of all of my weaknesses about on a daily basis. Where yeah. are you? It's backwards. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> it is. The screen is bad. <laughs> Christy and I have worked together for years now, and she knows the things I suck at, and she call you know she calls me out on it. And thankfully, she's very good at those things, and that's why I think disc assessment is so important. Because previously, when I hired assistants, I hired them because I liked them. We got along. I'm like, oh, I love you. We're gonna get along so well. And then not since, not until I finally made them take disc assessments to realize when I need somebody, I need my opposite. I don't need somebody who's really good at one, what I'm good at. I need somebody to do the things that I am not good at or I don't feel like doing. And Chris, 
And Christy is organized and Christy is detail oriented. Christy is patient. <laughs> <laughs> I am one of those things. And that so so it wasn't until I learned to read a desk assessment, but in order to do that, you have to ask at first take your own desk assessment to see who you are at work and who you are as a person. I am totally different personality in my home and comfort setting than I am at work and in business life. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. I love that. And you know, you you've um, you're a great example. Everybody listening in, and and you accept it, right? You know it. You're like. I suck at that shit and I don't ever want to do it again. No. And, and where, like where some people struggle is, is they have a belief that they can do everything and, and do everything well. Right. And I, I do I can that. do anything I set my mind to now, would that be the best return on my time? Probably not. It's not because I can create a file in Skyslope. It's not because I can sit down for two hours and help an agent with the onboarding process. Would I be the best person to do that? Probably not because I'm snippy. I'm short. I go straight to the point. I probably make him cry. I am not patient. <laughs> you know I mean? So would that be the, is, can I do it? Of course I can. Am I the best fit for the job? Absolutely not. I love that. And you know, the, the, the quicker that you can come to grips with that, the faster you can move. And yeah. you know, that's, that's what slows people up. Um, is, is that, is that belief, right? Remember we went back to belief. They believe that, and I'm going to tell you that shit ain't true, right? That's a, that's, that's bullshit. And yeah. you gotta, you gotta be willing to call, call that, call it what it is. And you know, I know what I should not be doing. And so I don't even touch it. I don't even mess with it. Like if, if, if you try to get me to do something that I know that I don't, I'm not good at, I'll just look yeah. at you and be like, we better find somebody else to, to do that. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it really is. So, so kudos to you for that. That's a great example for everybody listening in what, uh, what Gogo shared. All right, Gogo, you think they want some more or are they good? Absolutely. We have so many questions, but if I may add to this, cause I heard it in a, in, in a podcast a couple of days ago and it was eye opening to me. So if you wanted to be the best golfer, so this was the question on the podcast. They said, if you wanted to be the best golfer ever, would you, who would you hire? And like 70% of the people said they would hire Tiger Woods. And they, and the answer was no, you need to hire Tiger Woods' coach. coach. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Yep. You want necessarily the one that's best that put the hard work in because you can also put the hard work in. You want the one that guided that person of what kind of work and when and how you have to do in order to become the next Tiger Woods. You know, and go, go, I think let's go back to the self-assessment and, and really looking at where you're at in your life and, and, and being honest with your current skill set. So in that golf scenario, you have to evaluate your current skill set and where you're at. And then you look at, okay, you know, obviously Tiger's coach growing up, probably where you're at with his skill set was his dad. So, you know, who, you know, kind of, do you, do you need that type of mentality? You know, do you need that type of mental abuse that Tiger took? Probably not, but you need to find somebody that helped kind of, you know, at that help mold those golfers at that point, right. With their skill set. And, you know, it's just like when we, when we jumped on earlier, like I can help you get to, get to a million in revenue. If that's your goal. Um, you know, I'm not going to be the best. I'm not, you know, I mean, I, I understand the principles of sales and marketing. I know where the trends are. I know where you should be spending time and energy. Um, but I'm not the guy that's, that's in the trenches executing on, on sales and marketing. That's not my strength. My strength is, is if you want to get to 10 million, I, and you're at a million, I'm your guy. I can get you from one to 10, but you know, so, so you have to, you have to under understand that. And that's what you need to look for. So, um, you know, finding somebody that, you know, understands that, that can get you to that level. You know, Tiger's had multiple coaches that have got him to different points in his career. Right. And you look at these other golfers as well. These, uh, these other athletes, you know, um, you know, being able to get you to, to, to those different, different points. But it's not always it's not always that way. Um, you know, a great lesson from one of our mentors was was Clay Mask, um, who's the the um, CEO at Infusionsoft, and we spent a lot of time with Clay and the leadership team over the years as we were growing in AEA. And um, you know, one of the things that Clay 
um, did is that he had one of the most amazing coaches. Um, he paid, his coach was 150,000 a year and you paid up front at the beginning of the year. You paid, you wrote a check to his coat for 150,000 and you met with him for an hour every week at his house in Phoenix. And he has people fly from all over the world would fly into Phoenix to spend an hour with him as their coach. And then he would fly out and Clay, Clay stopped working with him because he thought he needed a coach that could help get his business beyond where he wanted to go. And in that, he said it was, it was, it was, it was a good experience, but it wasn't the experience he needed. So he went back to his, his original coach and his life was back on track. Right. And so, um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's also important understanding when you're, when you're looking for somebody to align, to work with, um, you know, the coach isn't going to do it for you too, go, go. Right. Like, well, that's, that's like one of the things like, you know, if you expect me to do it for you, then I'm going to, then we need to talk, we, we need to have a different conversation. <laughs> if I'm going to, if I'm going to do for you, then we're going to be talking about maybe a percentage of ownership in your company, right? That's a different relationship. Yeah. But when you're looking from somebody from a coach, you're going to have to do the work. And, you know, that's where I see people fail with coaching. They're just not willing to do the work. Yeah, same with reading books and listening to podcasts and all that. It's it's access information if you don't act on it. You need to act 100%. on it. You need to implement. If you're not going to implement, one of my favorite quotes, and I just shared in a in a live prior to this today, it's the description of insanity. It's doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. 100%. If you're not willing to change, you're not willing to put in the next level of work that it requires to be to, to go to that next level, you then can't go to that next level. It's that simple. You can't do this level of work, but expect this level of money. 100%. It requires work in between that you're going to have to put in. Go, go. I think I got two more slides and then we'll, uh, we'll jump, into, jump into questions. Awesome. I'll go back to, oops, right. Sorry about that. Right here. So this, this is the, the, the three P's. If you're looking to like get your, your, your business, this, and it actually works in any equity of life. The three P's. One, you've got to have a simple plan. It can't be complex. It can't be complicated. Like you, you like you need to be able to give it. Like you know, Zane's going into fourth grade. I need to be able to give my plan to Zane, and he knows what the hell I'm trying to do. That's yep. simple, right? So we need a simple game plan. Now let's go back to write things right order. What's the goal? What is it that we're trying to accomplish? Do we have the right model to get us there? And then what's the game plan? to execute, to get us towards our goal. The next is getting to productivity. All productivity is, is accomplishing the results we want. If we're not getting the results we want, go, go, we're not productive. Mm -hmm. We're busy, right? Yeah. There's a difference. Busy or productive. Are we getting results or are we not? If we're not getting results, we're not productive. And your job as a leader is to get yourself to productivity. And then if you have a team, it's to get your team to be productive as well. And then, then third is profits. There is only one goal in business, one goal, and that's to make money. And you've got to focus on the profits of what, what it is that you're doing. So simple game plan, focus on productivity. And are we getting the profits that we should for the effort that we're putting in? Okay. And those are the three P's. Um, you know, you guys need to look at and evaluate in your current business and in your current life. And the one gift, GoGo, -Go, that I want to give everybody uh, on Team GoGo, -Go, and, and um, if you guys are, are listening in Honey Badger, Badger Nation, we've talked about this. If you have not gone to freeclarityreport.com, go over there, download the Clarity Report. It's probably one of the most impactful um, exercises that you can do. Anybody that comes to work with us um, in a in a one-on-one in -on -one setting, this is the first exercise they do. They go through the Clarity Report. Um, it's a document that has stood the test of time. Uh, the, the Jay and Michael and, and Wally um, put it together on Wally's kitchen table back in 2010, I believe, 09, 2010 timeframe. They wrote, they wrote this document and it's, it's as good today, if not better. It's one of those things, you know, go, go Al, Al did this in 2010. He still carries his clarity report around with him. Next no, time you see him, it's in his briefcase. So next time you see him, just say, hey, let me see your, back then it was called the turning point. But uh, 
uh, he still has it with him. It's, I mean, it's, it's so powerful. So you guys go over to freeclarityreport.com, um, download the clarity report, and that'll help you on your way to helping you get clear on what is the goal and then getting that plan in place um, to move you closer to it. So that's all I got. You ready to jump into some questions? I am. I can't wait to take all of these uh, tests today. I have <laughs> like three dot coms that I wrote down and I need to pack because I'm going to San Diego in the morning, but I really want to get these done because I'm curious. I'm, I'm jealous. You're getting some beach time. Oh, I hope they don't shut the beach down, but that's how I get oh, it. No. Better hurry. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So we have a few questions. So I'll start with the ones that are printed, and I think Christy has some extra yeah. ones. Um, so Diana Robles asks, what are your top three daily non-negotiables? Top three daily non-negotiables? What are the things that you do no matter what the day throws at you? <laughs> um, work out, break a sweat, right? That's uh, that's that's number one um, every, every day. I'll miss a day. I'll, I'll, I'll miss a day here or there. Um, but, uh, for the most part, I think I've missed six days this year, total seven days. Wow. Wow. So break a sweat. Um, you know, the other, the other non-negotiable is, um, you know, telling my kids and, and Holly that I love them, you know, and, and really, you know, focused on, you know, uh, something of gratitude, right. A gratitude practice. You know, I really try to try to, you know, model as close to Hal Elrod's uh, The Savers, right? So silence, um, which is, you know, for me is is uh, guided meditation. I would say any, any if you really want to be a top performer, this is, this is a non-negotiable. If you want to be a top performer, you need to have some type of mindfulness practice, some type of either prayer, silence, um, meditation, guided meditation. If you want to perform at the highest of levels, that is a non-negotiable. You have to have some type of mi mindfulness practice because it slows everything down. That's my morning coffee. As Dwayne, he just got here. Yeah. You know, do not, if you see coffee, if you see coffee in here, don't talk. We have to have it, right? We I have to have that. Time. I want my thoughts clear. I want just me and God and anything that I need to think about, anything I need to figure out, anything I need to resolve, anything I need to plan, anything I need to be thankful for, all that happens in the morning. I usually wake up before the rest of my family and I have that me time in the morning and that is non-negotiable. I love it. Yep. So those those, those are them. Those are the non-negotiables. Awesome. Love it. Next question. Jessica Angel. What is the most common thing or habit you see agents doing wrong? Uh, um not, I mean, really it's, it's, it's effort. Um, that's where, that's where I see a lot of agents is they're not putting in the work. They're not willing to put in the effort. They want it to come to them. And that takes a little bit of time, right? It's all, it's all, like I said, to get to a million in sales and marketing. And if you're not spending your, it's, it's high, it's HLAs. It's your highest leverage activities. Are you spending 70 plus percent of your working time on the things that matter, right? Are you focused on lead gen every day? Are you focused on lead conversion every day? Are you focused on putting those, um, those, those appointments? Are you pitching your offer? Are you, are you getting clients? Are you negotiating deals? 70 plus percent of your time has to be on those highest leverage activities, or you're not spending enough time on the things that matter. That's where they fail. So effort is the common denominator. Yeah. Diana yeah. Robles asks, um, I am on social media, I am in social media groups and see a lot of people doing for sale by owner, believing that because the market is moving so quickly in her area that they don't need a realtor. How do you approach or market to those sellers? Or do you recommend to? Oh man, it's a it's it's tough, right? So, you know, you know, different different the seasons of the market, right? You know, to where the 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 greater opportunity is at. Um, you know, there's, uh, Google, Google search is up. Um, let me, let me read this hundred percent accurate. So I don't, I don't want to confuse you guys. I want to, I want you guys to nail it. Let me see where this is at two, two seconds here. Um, okay, here it is. So highest amount of Google searches in 16 years. 16 years for terms related to selling a house. No way. This trend would seem to indicate that the record number of homeowners are looking to learn about selling their home, which means more listing inventory will be coming to market. So we're looking at those indicators. And so if we know that is true, 
<laughs> if we know that is true, the number one thing is that you better be loving and paying attention to the people that know you, like you, love you, and trust you. Period. Number one. Then, then where are the other opportunities, right? You know, go, go, what you do, building the audience, getting people paying attention, start making offers, right? Are we making offers? Are we making home value offers? Are we, you know, hey, how has, how has, you know, COVID impacted the value of your home? You know, how much equity do you, do you know how much equity you have in your home? Like, what are those offers are we making? And so I wouldn't get hung up on for sale by owners. They have that belief. They don't like you as a real estate agent for some reason, although they are the like, the likelihood, the probability of working with you higher than other than an expired. So do you want, I would nurture on them. I would love on them, but I wouldn't spend, I wouldn't exhaust my energy on them. So I, I would I probably even reach out to them until they've been on the market for a little long time. Yeah. And then reach out to them and be like, okay, you ready for my help? Because you clearly need yeah. it. Yeah. How's it going? You know, how are you guys holding up? You know, are you, you kind of worried about traffic coming through the home? You guys are worried about that? You know, it's hey, cool. have you got, you know, just how can you add value? If you come from a place of abundance and, and looking to just add value and make an offer, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Sounds good. Next on Beth Silverman. What are John's top five ways of holding yourself accountable? Mm. Um, environment is stronger than willpower. So, you know, the conditions you create around you, um, you know, accountability groups, coaches, um, you know, immediate peer to peer, um, you know, do you, you got a, you got a competition, right? Do we got some money on the line? Um, in, in anything that you can create those conditions, right? So like, um, for example, if you struggle to get to, you know, you got to get to the gym, right? You know, and, and here's the thing to, to really get our bodies to perform at the highest levels. We got to lift some heavy stuff, right? I, I you, you got to lift shit at some time to, yeah. to really help us. Um, it's not just breaking a sweat, just, just running, biking or whatever, but we also got to lift some heavy stuff. And if you struggle getting to the gym, whatever, then try to get some gym equipment at the house. All right. I know it's tough right now. Like I want a six. I mean, I, I got a whole gym ordered, right? But when's it going to be here? Eight weeks? I don't care. It's ordered. I, I think I read an article how like weights are totally of shortage because everybody being home and no access to the gym and everybody's ordering weights and nobody yep. has them. Yep. A hundred percent. So, you know, creating those conditions to where success is inevitable. Um, you know, if you know, if you struggle, it's the accountability partners. So like for us on the fitness side of things, right. So like training for Ironman, you know, I've got, there, there's our Facebook accountability group that you guys can join daily accountability. You know, th- th- we post in there, we have a Facebook group. There's about 12 of us that post in there every day, Nick Nanton, Mike, Jay, um, you know, there's a handful of us. So we're always posting every day in their woods, um, and then we've got, um, you know, I have a coach, <laughs> right. That I'm accountable to, um, you know, and then, you know, like shit, Holly knows my goals. Like if she doesn't see me working out, she's gonna be like, what the hell are you doing? You taking a couple of days off. Right. So share your goals with the people that love you the most because. And, and, and also you know, I feel like personally, when you say something out loud, especially on social media, now you have to do it. Yeah. I have all of these people watching. If yeah. You gotta- get it done or fail at it. So yeah. that's accountability to me. It works because I'm like, I, I, I said, I'm going to do it. Now I have to do it. I, no, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also started this thing called CPR and it's from a group that I belong to. So C, C stands for commitment. P stands for pain or penalty and R, R stands for reward. So you set for commitment for the week. If you don't get it done by the end of the week, what happens? So you set your pain or penalty. You say, I can't have coffee for a week. I have to wake up at five o'clock for the for 5 a.m. the next week. I can't eat meat for a month. Whatever your pain is. And you better set that pain to be so painful that you know you're going to get your stuff done. And then also reward. Reward yourself for getting it done. Because no matter how small or big it is, you're one step closer to your final goal. And we, and we work. I, I, mean, I, do, I like that dangling carrot at the end of be like, if I get this done, then I go get a massage. Do you know that app? I know I, I've been trying to find that app. Kyle, Kyle shared the app to where like you have the accountability. If you don't plug your numbers in or something, because you already preset it, that it'll debit money out of your account and send it to like a charity. So you already set it up. 
right? Like how- awesome. One of our team members, I gotta find that out. Have to, if they don't get it done, their penalty was that they have to donate $100 to the opposite party yeah. of who they want to vote for. And he's like, oh, hell yeah, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, doing something like that, you know, but, you know, I think, I think too, you know, it, it comes down, like you said, it, it's all about commitments, mm-hmm. right? And so that, that at the end of the day, if we're not being productive, it's probably just we're not committed. So you have to really look at that as like, is that really the goal? Am, yeah. Is that something I'm really willing to commit to, right? Before I did Ironman, I had to say, okay, well, what the hell does that even mean, right? What is, what, what's the commitment for that? And is that something that I'm willing to commit to? Yeah. And of course, you know, I got everybody's buy-in that, that matters, right? Got the kids buy-in, got Holly's buy-in. And, and so then I was like, okay, now I'm committed, right? And I think that's where a lot of people jump in and say, well, I'm committed, are, are you really? Do you know what that means? You're, you don't even right? know what you're committed to, yeah, because you didn't read exactly. enough. And I also think that breaking your your plan down simple, as you said, the simple plan. Like mm-hmm. if you have this big goal of becoming an Ironman, okay, what does that entail? Do I have to buy mm-hmm. a bike? Do I have to have running shoes? Do I need a babysitter for my children? Do I do this early in the morning? Do I do this late at night? Do I have to skip dinner? Do I buy dinner on the way there? Do I eat after I run? Like those things, you would have to like like figure out. And as soon as you break it down to <laughs> simple steps. Of it now, you know. Okay, this is what I need to get done today. I need to go buy a bike. Yep. And you know the funny thing? What? I tried to tackle that all by myself, and I got about I got about three and a half, four months from my first event. So I had been training, I had been training for about three months, four months by myself. I had had a great training platform, and they offered a coach, and I didn't take it up on it. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I hit the coach button, and uh, I've had a coach. I, I just, I'm on my second coach now, and she's. She's amazing. I mean, if you think about it, everybody who's somebody in any industry, like a football player or a Mike Tyson or a, you name it, they all had a coach. That's it. You know, they yep. didn't become who they are because they were like, oh, I'm going to get to the end of Google by myself. Yep. Like, no, they had somebody telling them exactly what to do, when to do it, and, and do go do nine more. You got yep. it. Because we would give up. You're like, ah, that was good. That was good enough. Yep. Awesome. Next question. Ted Brown, what, what streams of lead generation seems to have the best ROI? I mean, you know, the best lead gen is, is, um, you know, word of mouth, you know, your brand. Um, I mean, that, that is the, the highest ROI, right? Um, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing greater, especially, you know, when you, when you, when you look at the LTV, right, the lifetime value, um, you know, what, what did it cost you to acquire that initial client? And then what's the measurement of it over the course of your career? And I think that's where a lot of agents get short-sighted is that they're just so fixated on the next, the next commission check that they're, they're not, you know, really cultivating and developing the relationships within their database and their, and their, their audience, the people that know them, like them, love them, trust them. It, it, it is the brand, but it, but it's, it's, it's this and that, right. You know, brand takes a long time, takes time. And, and, you know, people want to try to rush it. And then I think that's in, in Google, you can speak to this all day long, but I think when you try to rush brand there, you lose some authenticity. I don't, I don't, I, I don't think, you know, you, you're genuine when you try to, when you try to rush it. And then, then there's short-term activities, right? Short-term activities, lowest, you know, uh, lowest cost, easiest to implement, fastest return. That's why we always talk about expires for sale by owners, canceled withdrawns, um, you know, I don't know if you want to go down the rabbit hole, um, but uh, notice of defaults, right? You know, is is a, is a particular niche you might want to be paying attention to. Um, you know, building brand, you know, on a, on on social media, but also within your community. Yeah. Those are those are some of the strategies that if you're if you're balling on a budget, that's where you want to hit. You want to hit all of the the low cost. There's so many local groups that you can belong to and just jump on those things. People ask for, hey, I need a realtor and just jump on it. There's so many different opportunities that you can do it for free. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Um, Jessica's asking Jessica Angel, thoughts on offering a flat rate to listings? You know, you know, when you go, when you go discount, I mean, it's a race to the bottom. Um, you, you, I don't know if you want to play that game. Because there's always somebody that will do it cheaper, always. And you go down that rabbit hole, good luck. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you invest in, in develop your skill set and, and focusing on adding the most amount of value that you can, and you believe, the reason that, that you would go flat rate or discount is that you don't believe that you're worth what your fees are. 
And so that belief is, is not true. That's bullshit. If you, if you invest in yourself, you, you have the process, right? If you go through the training, if you go through CHSA, you, you, you go through one of our boot camps, right? There, you have the skill set. You have the tools. Now, now you, you just have to believe it, right? You just have to believe that you're worth it. And I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that route because there's always somebody that will do it cheaper. I agree with you. So Jessica, just so you know, the NAEA certification program is what John is talking about. And that it is a benefit that we all receive from being a honey badger. Um, so reach out to Christy if you don't know how to do that. And she will show you how. Um, so you can go through that training because it is amazing. So John, I have some personal questions for you. Fire away. So what's the average you would say a coach charges nowadays? Like a good coach, not an average coach, but a good coach that you want to take your business to that good next level. Like what's a good hourly rate? Um, and how often should you meet with that coach? You know, um, I mean, in a, it, it really, it really depends. Um, you know, there's programs out there, you know, thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand a month. Um, you know, you really just, you, you unpack everything that's a part of it. Um, I see, I see Gadosh jumping in there, but, um, you know, Gadosh has been a part of our mastermind almost from, from jump, maybe year two, I think Gadosh got in year two. And, um, I mean, part of our mastermind program had coaching component and, you know, that was 25,000 a year plus travel to three events, exotic locations. So you're talking another 15 to 20,000 to be a part of that program. So you just got to kind of look at what it is that you're currently trying to accomplish, um, in your business you, you can find people that will, you know, maybe get into a group. Maybe if you, if you're, if you're kind of concerned on, on your budget, you know, maybe there's a, a group scenario to where you can get in, you know, um, at, at about 500 bucks a month, all the way up to, you know, 13, 14, 1500 bucks a month. So, so can I ask you how much you charge if somebody wants you? How much you charge? And are you, are you open? <laughs> um, I've been, I've been saying for a little bit, it's it going to be, it's going to be harder to get, to get, to get on my calendar. But, um, right now, right now it's, it, um, it's nine ninety seven a month. Um, you know, 30 day cancellation, no, no long-term contracts. I know there's a lot of coaching programs out there that they want to lock you in for, for 12, 16 months, 18 months. I yeah. think it's bullshit. Um, I think it should be the 30 day cancellation, you know, life happens, things change. Um, you know, you shouldn't be locked in to anything like that. So um, I know we're going to jump. I know we're going to jump up. Um, yeah. We're doing a couple things that will get rolled out here before too long that um, will add a, additional value. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting, I'm going to, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to get, to get on my calendar. It's just because like I said in the beginning, you know, I, I mean, I can help, I can help you if you're willing to help yourself. And that's the other thing too, go, go with coaching is that the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So how often do you meet with those agents that pay the 997? Is it every month? week, every once week? a week, once Is a week, an hour, half an hour, half an hour. And that's a great rhythm. You know, if you're putting in the work and you're busy, I mean, like you're being productive, like yeah. you're getting after it, you know, that's, that's good. That's good. Especially when we do the initial work early on in, in getting that plan together, then it's about executing on the plan. Yeah. It's about executing on the and then what is, uh, what does that look like? Is it a simple phone call? Is it a zoom call? Is it, what is it? We like? do a little mix. We do a little mix. It just kind of depends. You know, I've got a few clients that want to jump on because, you know, um, I, I like the zoom. I like to like this. I like this interaction. I like yeah. to see that you're paying attention too, right? Yeah, yeah. That you're engaged. Besides, in the conversation. besides the nitty and gritty of the real estate stuff, do you also help them with like mindset things? You must read this book. Do you make recommendations of what you're listening to this podcast? Do they have certain homework that they have to turn in with you? Like, how does that work? Yeah. Um, it's all of the above. You know, sometimes it's a therapy session and sometimes it's counseling. Sometimes it is, right? Because, you know, I, I can tell you, you know, though everybody out there has got shit they're dealing with. Everybody. And and so it's it's also about, you know, how can we remove those barriers because those things will will impede your productivity. Yeah. You're having challenges at home, if you're having challenges with the kiddos, it's going to distract you. And, and so how do we close the loop on those distractions so we can get back to productivity in our business? Yeah. So it's like a therapy session sometimes. I'm just making sure for some reason the comments, oops, sorry, yeah. comments stopped. So I want to make sure I'm um, coming in here, make sure that we didn't, uh, we didn't miss anything. 
Um, is there anything that uh, we should know and ask? So if somebody's interviewing a coach, how, what kind of questions do they ask? Yeah. I mean, you just, you're, you're looking for, you know, the program, you're trying to uncover, you know, their beliefs, their values, um, you know, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. What are, what, like, like I said, you know, what, um, you know, what are they going, what, what tools, <laughs> what toolbox, what tools, what are they bringing to the table to help you accomplish? What's that framework that we're, you're yeah. going to take me through um, to help me get to the destination that I'm after? And, is it about you? Is it about your destination, or is it about my destination? I think that's a that's a key distinction that you want to uncover because you know your definition of success is different than mine. It's different yeah. than than Brandon's. It's different than than Gaydosh's, right? So you know, really trying to figure out what is your definition of success, what it is it that you want to accomplish. Let's put that plan together, and then let's let's get after it. Love it. And do you believe? Um, I I guess this is a question. Do you believe that the coach should be selling real estate themselves to have experience in the real estate market or it's mostly mindset and getting you to do things to be successful that it's not necessarily tied to the next real estate transaction? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. You know, for me, you know, I got licensed in 05. I started with, with Jay in 04, October of 04. I got licensed in January, February of 05. And, um, I really didn't sell until 07, 08. And, um, I, you know, I really primarily worked with, I had a great builder relationship and uh, really helped a builder get kicked off in our market and listed and sold a lot of his stuff until, you know, he got to the point where, and that was the goal, right? He was setting up in-house sales, but I, I helped him get to that point to where he could do that. And, you know, I picked up opportunities, you know, we were pioneers in, uh, you know, online lead generation early on, like we were the first adopters with Tiger Leads with with Howard, um, you know, very first with Commissions Inc., right? So you look at, you know, those platforms, we were early, early, early on. And so, you know, knew, knowing how to do that. And then, you know, 09, 10 timeframe, I sold a little bit here and there, um, just friends, buddies, you know, a couple builders here and there. Um, but, but a main focus on operations and how to, you know, to, to get, you know, to get this business going and making some money. And so, you know, I think an understanding, especially on the real estate side, um, have, having an understanding of, um, of real estate, maybe have sold, can, can, can understand the ins and outs. Because here's the thing is that before selling real estate, um, I was naive. Like agents would tell me certain things and I would just believe them. Then when I sold, I was like, man, <laughs> Dude, straight up lied to me. That's bullshit. That shit don't work like that. So, you know, I, 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 I wasn't that naive, right? So I was like, yeah. understanding, like feet on the ground, sold some transactions to understand what it's like to be in their shoes. I think that's the biggest thing is that I have empathy for 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 what you guys are going through. So I get it, right? And I think that's what you want to look for. Do do they have? Do they have? Are they empathetic to to what it is that you're the struggle that you're dealing with? Awesome. So John. If they want to have you, and I know it's not easy, but if you <laughs> have a chance to get in on in your calendar and, and have you personally to coach them, what is the best way for them to get a hold of you? Go go through the Clarity Report. Go download the Clarity Report. And then on there, what you can do is you can set up a Clarity Call. Okay. And one of one of our team will reach out to you, get you on a Clarity Call, and um, you know see if it's a good fit for you. You know, um, you know the thing that, that I always say too is that, you know, coaching's not, you know, necessarily doesn't have to be for everybody. And, you know, I, I would say if you don't want to be a top performer and you don't want, you know, to, to grow your business, then, you know, we're probably not a good fit for you. And so, you know, that, that, you know, you can, you can mastermind with team go, go the honey badger nation and learn enough. If your if your goal is to only sell, 10 to 12 deals a year. But if you want to make the jumps and you know, you need to create some leverage, right. Then. And build a team and have resources and systems and yeah. Yep. Go to clarity report, download the report and then schedule a clarity call. That is the absolute best way. Awesome. So what if somebody doesn't necessarily have the production behind themselves, they are newer, but they have the drive they will put in the effort. Would you think? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, we're looking at, you know, you got to be willing to make that investment in yourself. And, you know, we've, we've, we've talked to folks that, Hey, maybe you just weren't quite ready. Let's, Hey, you need to do this, this, and this, or just do this. And then let's schedule a call in, in six days and see where you're at. Yeah. Right. And then you, then you, then you, you should be ready if you did this. And that's a great indicator, right? If they, if they did that coming out of the clarity call, if they did that, if we schedule a call in a month or two, you should be in a position to where you say, all right, let's go. Love it. Well, we are right on the hour, five minutes past. Sorry. <laughs> Your time. Thank you for answering all of the questions. Um, I hope this helps a lot of people to clear up of what is a coach's job and why we should have coaches. And uh, I appreciate your time and your knowledge and sharing everything that you know about this industry with us. And uh, I hope that somebody gets really lucky to get you as their coach. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That was fun. And uh, we'll definitely have to figure a way to do it again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Team Gogo. And thank See you, you guys. Team Badgers Nation. Bye, guys. See you, John. See ya.